Hey guys, it's Com B, and today we will be doing a CV2 tutorial on how to keep track of score using CV2 chips. Uh, for this example, I will be using a basketball net, but you could apply the same logic to all different kinds of inventions and rooms that you are creating. So let's get started, and I will show you how the example works, and then we'll go through a step by step of where to find the chips and how to wire them up. So let's get started. All right, guys, so as you'll see, um, the score starts at zero. That's what the text uh, outputs. And when I score basketball, I get two points. Obviously, I made this really easy basketball hoop. And if I shoot again, I get four points. And they'll keep going up by increments of two. And let's get started on replicating this so you could see how I created it. Try it out for yourself. And the more you replicate and learn things, um, the better you'll get at CV2. All right, so what I did right now is I just replicated this bas basketball hoop um, to look like the one over here. But it doesn't have to be a basketball hoop. You could just make a box. You can make a cylinder, whatever you want. In this case, I'm just, I had a basketball hoop that I created already, and we're going to add a trigger volume to it. So if I go to my CV2 gadgets and click on create trigger volume, this will enable that every time the basketball goes into the basket, it will send out an event. And you'll notice that every rec room object, if you can hit configure, it all has a tag associated with it. For, for example, this is a basketball, but you could also create your own tags. And if you create your own objects, you could create a tag and filter this trigger volume by that tag. So I hit configure on the trigger volume, and I'm going to go filter by tag, and I'm going to type in basketball. So now only when basketballs go in the hoop will count as a point. Next up, I'm going to go to my circuits v2, search chips, um, and I will go to math and I will find the add, the add chip. We will also be needing, if I go back one, and go down to variable, we'll be interested in integer variables because in basketball, you count by whole numbers. You can configure the integer variable if you want. I would recommend it just to create neat circuits. I'm gonna call this score. And I am going to now begin wiring, so Every time the object enters, it's going to create an event and execute the score button. Right now, the score obviously is zero. But what I'll want to do is take the score that it outputs, and that will create an integer that feeds into my add function. And then we'll want to add two to the second value so that it counts up by two every time you score a basket. So for simplicity's sake, I should probably move this underneath. Um, and then it will take the sum of the score and what you added and I want to feed that right back into the score. So right now, if you hover over with the wire, the integer is zero because we haven't shot any basketballs yet. But if I were to shoot a basketball right now, you'll notice now my integer jumps up to two because it's taking the object that enters and adding two to that. So next up, we'll want to create a text gadget. So under my CV2 gadgets, 
go to uh, text v2 and I will have text. I will recolor this just because I enjoy the white colors um, when I look at my score. Um, you'll see up here that the text get um, prop or gadget comes with a, its own chip for setting the text. But we're going to add a few more chips before we set this up. The first is we are going to look for a two string and put this chip over here and also a string format because we want to have the text show the score and then the number next to the score. All right, so now what I'm going to want to do is make sure that my score, the output of this variable, is linked to the two string. And what it's going to do is take the number from the variable and put it into a text format. So the result will be your value. And the format will be score. I always forget what that's called, the, the two dot, maybe Colin. And then uh, you want a bracket, zero bracket. And what this is saying is it's going to take the first variable and it's going to input it where the brackets are. So it'll end up just saying score and then giving the number of the score. Then you want your result to be your text. So how do we set the text? We want it to execute when we have a score. Okay, so let's give it a try. See what happens. All right, so now our score is up to four. All right, guys, so one thing I want to mention is if you start a new instance of a room, you'll notice that my text goes to just the word text instead of saying the score, and that's because we haven't yet shot a basket. So I'm going to show you how to change this so that it'll say score zero um, when you enter a room, and also how to set up a reset button. So the first thing I want to do is go to my CV2 gadgets and click on button. Now I'm going to configure the button to say reset okay and we'll move this circuit board up here and we're going to want to also clone the score so we'll want for the reset and also when the um the room refreshes we will want the score to show zero so we'll say if the button is pressed, the score will be zero, so we'll keep that as zero, and that will set the text. And the value will be zero, so let's test this out. All right, so now we have a reset button. And now to show you how to create it so that when the room refreshes, the score will also show a zero. What we're going to want to do is go to our circuits v2, search chips, and we want an event receiver. So basically, we want to say whenever the room is refreshing, if the score is zero in this chip, that it'll actually output score is zero. So we'll also need an if chip, which you could also find in the commonly used section. And we'll want an equals chip, which is in the math section, but I usually type everything out. All right, so now that we have our chip set up, we have the event receiver, the if function, and the equals. We'll want to say, 
um, the event receiver will want to configure this. We'll go to chip settings and we'll change it to 30 hertz. That just means that it will be continuously updating. And we'll say when the room refreshes, we're going to see if this um, equation is true. And the equation will link up to the condition. And we'll say if the score here is zero, then we want the score to show up as zero. If not, that's fine because we have the trigger zone set up to count the score. So again, um, and this might be e a little bit easier if I separate out the chips a little bit more, but what we're saying is if when you refresh the room and in the instance, if the trigger zone hasn't had any hits with the basketball, and that and that's saying if the integer is zero, then we want it to link up to the score integer of zero, and it will feed zero into into the text. So we'll test this out by saving the room and seeing if it works. And there we go, we have the score is zero, and we shoot a basket. Now the score is two, score is four, and if I hit reset, it goes to zero. So what I'll do is I'll just hover over the CV2 so you could take a look once more. And so we have our trigger volume executing to an integer variable and adding two every time the basketball goes into the basket or the trigger zone. And they'll store the number into the score. We want that score to feed into a string format on our text tool. And in this case, we have it saying score is zero. If you just wanted it to show the number, then you wouldn't need the two string. Well, you wouldn't need the string format, I should say. You would just need the string result and you can link that to the text. Um, so now we have our score linked to the text. We also have the reset button, which says if the button is pressed, we want the score to be zero, and now feed into our string for our text. And lastly, we have the refresh if the trigger zone has not yet been touched and the score is zero. It's going to, again, feed into this score is zero integer and output it into the text. So there you go, guys. I hope this um, helped you out a bit with CV2. I'll be doing some more projects uh, later on. If you like this video and you want to see more CV2, uh, please comment below. And if you have any questions, I'll try to answer them as well. Thanks, guys.